Hi friends, Craig from the Barefoot Forge here for Weld.com. Today we've got a really fun project for you. We're going to fix a lawnmower deck. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Probably about 75% of you have fixed lawnmower decks for friends and family, and the other 25% of you came here to try to figure out how to fix a lawnmower deck. I'm not exactly sure why lawnmower decks rust out the way they do, but it must be because grass is some kind of nasty stuff. My mama always told me to stay away from the people that do grass. So, you know, let's fix a lawnmower deck. This has got to be the single worst lawnmower deck I've ever seen. It's just such a profound example. We'll go through it, but we've got these random brackets welded in here. We've got a hole here that's been repaired with a piece of conveyor belt material and some self-tapping screws. This is broken off multiple times, as is pretty much everything that's critical. Lots of very bad welds in the past. So plenty of areas where it's worn completely through, or the metal is just fully fatigued. Oh, some of these patches. We've got all kinds of horrible welds, and it's covered in dirt. I don't even know what kind of tractor this goes to. Let's fix it up. So you gotta ask yourself two questions. Why am I laying on the ground on top of a lawnmower deck? And which of these repairs actually matter? I really haven't come up with an answer to the first question. I just thought it would be cute. It's really not that flattering of a shot. So we'll move on to the second question. One of the things that's cool about a lawnmower deck is so much of it really doesn't matter. And you can do a pretty bad job because a lot of the common holes are actually in really low pressure areas where the grass accumulates because it's sort of non-structural. Then it rots out right there. If you think of the deck as a pretty simple giant fan, all we got to do is keep the grass on the bottom side and keep these blades from coming out and killing all of your neighbors. So as long as this bearing hub with the blades attached is mounted pretty rigidly right there, and all of these brackets and wheels are more or less where they are, it's probably fine. Holes in this leading edge, they're not very important. You could make an argument that the rubber patch with the sheet metal screws is actually a fairly adequate repair because it's in a non-structural area and it absolutely worked at keeping the air in the bottom of the deck. And we got a lot of issues on this front edge. It looks like some of them have been repaired by pieces of street sign with some kind of just horrible flux core machine. And we're going to go through and just sort of plow over them with a welder. We're not going to do a great job, and in the end, we're going to paint it with a rattle can, and you know what? I bet it will serve years of use to someone who owns whatever this tractor is. One of the things we're going to need to do, first off, is determine that this is made of steel. Because obviously, if it was made of aluminum or titanium or brass, we'd have problems welding to it. So, one of the ways we can determine that it is in fact made of steel is the fact that it's covered in rust. So, it's not galvanized. That's good to know. Well, you could throw a magnet on it or do a spark test. And we got to remember, we need clean metal in order to weld. Our, our spicy glue gun can't pierce paint very well. I mean, it can, but, you know, it's not supposed to tell you that. So we're going to use an angle grinder to do some of the cleanup stuff so that we get nice, shiny welds. We want shiny metal. Uh, I really like the battery-operated angle grinders. I think they're a lot nicer. And ones with variable speed are nice. That allows us to use our grindy dude, our flappy dude, and our cutty dude all at different RPMs. We're gonna make sure we got our safety glasses on. We're gonna put our ear protection on. We're probably gonna put some of that lung protection on too because we're gonna spray all this nasty stuff into this sky. And I don't like putting it in my pneumonia parts. So yeah, let's suit up and let's start. Well, we started by just cleaning up some of the nasties, just to sort of get a sense of things. And one of the things that does for you is it shakes loose all of the shake looseable bits. And that tells us, you know, what, what just isn't there. See, we have a hole here now. We can take our wooden handled screwdriver and stick it through there. We got a hole there too. And you know, that seems to be a pretty significant hole there. 
If we look at the back side of this, we can see this is where they welded on some kind of bracketry. They put like a piece of angle in there because it obviously had failed and that's what they had. So this is, this is important to a certain extent. This is really just a crack right here. So I think we can go ahead and just fill that in because it doesn't have to look that good. These areas back here, I think we'll have to patch with some metal. Maybe we'll just make a patch that goes over this whole thing and it does a pretty adequate job. Let's start there. This is about a 12 size cardboard patch today. So we got some of this. Let's start by just cutting a piece that we think would work well for us. I'll just put this right about there. Ideally, we would put this angle in it. That'll give us a lot of rigidity. Mark where our corner would be. Goes about there. And we'll transfer this into some metal. Put this notch in like that. That should work real well. Now, now we need to bend a little angle, dude. One of the ways to do that is to heat it up and to hit it with a hammer, but we're gonna just use this vise. We'll just put it in the vise and hit it with a hammer a whole bunch. It'll probably be fine. Yeah, I did a pretty bad job, but that's the thing. It's gonna be fine. Look at how good it looks. We'll probably have to take it to an anvil and do a little work there. See, I didn't shiny this sucker up enough, so we'll just go ahead and trace this. And then we'll go through and we'll, we'll use our shiny tool to make sure it's shiny all the way outside of that so we can get some good welds. So we're gonna grab our spicy glue gun. We're using a Hobart Handler 140, one of my favorite 110 volt MIG machines. And this is a great machine that normal people own and use to repair lawnmowers. Today we're going with a slightly middle grade helmet. We got the, the 2240, 2450 series Lincoln with the 4C lens. It's a really good helmet. I got it with the Jesse Combs polka dots on it. And we're gonna use our grounding strap as our, uh, <laughs> as our clampulator. It's holding it together so we can just put a couple of tacks in there and then just whoop, right? Got my settings set to four and 50 because that's what the machine says. I don't believe that's high enough and we're probably gonna crank it to five because personally I know this machine likes to run a little hot. You want to run it hotter. I guess that means it runs cold. We got some 75, 25 argon MIG mix because uh, not a big fan of flux core. So we got the shiny stuff. Let's hit it. Oh, we went ahead and got our tack down. So let's just zip it along here. We'll just do some of the whipping, whip it along from the top edge into there. Try not to get all of our heat concentrated on this thin stuff because it's just going to burn through. And where we have gaps, we'll just kind of tuck it in there. Just tuck it. So we started burning through right here and that's not ideal. And that's because we got big gaps and I don't know, everything's horrible. So we're gonna have to do some stitch welding. And stitch welding is just a series of long tacks stacked on top of each other. You let the heat cool down, you do it again. You let the heat cool down, you do it again. It's non-structural, but it doesn't need to be structural because like, first off, none of this did, and it's gonna be pretty strong because of the perimeter. So we'll just fill that in. Just treat it like a glue gun and tuck it in there. Now for this side, we gotta do a vertical. I'm not real good at verticals, and you probably aren't either. So we'll start at the bottom and we'll just kind of whip it around, sort of giving it some of that, moving kind of fast. I'll tell you the best way to do a vertical is to flip it on its side. That's always my go-to, but we'll just sort of do a little bit of that. It'll be fine. Well, having cut up and patched that bit, eh, not so great. Let's go ahead and cut this old patch out, which looks pretty horrible, 
and uh, we'll just plow over that with some more metal as well. We'll just keep adding, scabbing it onto the outside, wherever it doesn't matter. It'll be fine, probably. I marked it with the Sharpie, and we used our quality cardboard here to make a template. We'll put it pretty much there. Covers past the edge of the Swiss cheese on this side. A little bit past the edge of the Swiss cheese on that side. We'll probably burn holes in it because it's not that thick, but we'll just patch our iron in there and we'll just plow over all this crap. I guess it's time to address that guy. I'm not that confident those bolts are gonna come out, but we'll try it. We'll get ourselves one of the adjustable wrenches because I don't know what size it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are never gonna come off. I think we should cut them. Let's just go ahead and do a little plasmine. I got the little Hobart 110 volt plasma machine out. I'm a big fan of this thing because it's got a built-in air compressor and it's mega portable. It's mighty hot in here today, and uh, I'm blowing holes in everything, so we gotta try a little magic trick I've got. I'm gonna take one of these here copper bus bars. I just stole this out of my electricity box over there. And uh, if I hold this on the back of the weld, the weld won't stick to it, so I can just pop over it like I'm filling Bondo on a car with some wax paper. And uh, yeah, it'll fill in all my holes. It's not structural, but it's a lawnmower. Well, hey. I, uh, I think we're done here. Honestly, I'm exhausted and filthy and that was a long process. One of the beautiful things about repairing a lawnmower is you're really actually never done with repairing the lawnmower. It just is gonna perpetually keep blowing holes in itself and you're just gonna patch them and scab some more metal over top. So yeah, we're pretty good here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like the video, you should go ahead and leave a comment because uh, we like seeing the comments, but also you can head over to the Weld.com app. And the Weld.com app has more stuff like this. And if you like this and you think, hey, I like that guy too, I'd like to see more of him. Well, you can go on the old internets there. You can uh, dial it on up and click clack on the computer until you find me on all the MySpace-based websites. You'll find me at The Barefoot Forge. I'm a blacksmithing instructor out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My passion is teaching people and uh, inspiring them to try something new. Hopefully today, we inspired you to try it. Honestly, I think you can fix your lawnmower. And if you can't, I think you should try. Cheers, friend.